my name is Katrin Böttke and I am one of two directors of the Institute for Europäische Politik. My name is Funa Tikin, I'm the other director at uh, IEP and I'm also a member of the TEPSA board. Today we will be talking about Eurosceptics in Germany, the illusion of an alternative. Germany is comparably a newcomer in having uh, to deal with hard forms of populist right-wing Euroscepticism. With the rise of the AfD, we can observe a cleavage between cosmopolitical and nationalistic worldviews. We should be bolder and more proactive in communicating, explaining and supporting the integration project. German European policy was shaped by parties, media and a society that supported European integration. But in the 1990s, the first critical tendencies emerged. The CSU criticized the supposed loss of sovereignty, the Greens blamed environmental policies, and individual voices in the left party were valuing the EU as militaristic and undemocratic. However, with the establishment of the Alternative für Deutschland, an openly Eurosceptic party has grown within the political spectrum of Germany. Later, the party had their first time entry into the Bundestag in 2017. And apparently, the AfD seems to stay in the political discourse. At the last elections in 2017, the AfD gained 91 seats and is the third largest fraction of after the CDU and the SPD. Consequently, building a coalition government was very difficult and led to another grand coalition. At the regional level, the AfD has been able to consolidate a much longer trend since uh, 2014, when it first entered regional parliaments. Since 2018, the AfD is represented in all 16 state parliaments with a much stronger base in the East German Länder, with up to 27% uh, in Saxony. Firstly, the AfD's trademark approach is the emotionalization of topics, underlining how everyone is supposedly affected by any given policy. At the time of its foundation, the party was a single issue party. It opposed further European integration and was critical of the euro and bailout of Greece. In the 2010 years, the party lost substantial grounds, but with a large influx of refugees to Germany, a new crisis provided strong tailwinds in 2015. Anti-migration policies became the determining topic in other policy areas, including the welfare state, security policy and the current economy. The AfD's strategy is based on stage scandalization. During the last national and European elections, the AfD had a social media coverage which, which was above the other party. For example, the protests in Chemnitz in 2018 that started after a Cuban German was killed by refugees triggered the re-emergence of strong tensions regarding the issue of immigration to Germany. Furthermore, it served as a strong catalyst for AfD's policies and the party radicalized during these events. The rise of the AfD has had effects on the national and regional governments, EU policies and the political discourse. This was most visible in the 180 degree turn of the government's rhetoric on its migration policy in 2018. The Federal Minister of Interior, Horst Seehofer, was strongly driven by the regional elections in Bavaria and the threat of losing voices to the AfD. His migration policies almost caused the breakup of the Grand Coalition in 2019. Additionally, the fact that the AfD is represented in the Bundestag allows the party to directly impact policymaking through agenda setting or demands for committees of inquiry. One example was the case of the attack on the Berlin Christmas market in 2016, after which the Bundestag signed off new security policy measures.